OK, right. Good morning. Uh, just I've just this sheet thrown up here uh, this morning just to give you an idea of this this thing I always say practice uh, get your hand moving before we get going and kind of this is the kind of stuff we're going to start covering and, and going over today. Um, it should feed into PJ's class nicely. So um, just throw that to the side and we get started into this. Um, so today what we're going to look at uh, regards sketching is why do we sketch? OK, so the main reason or there's, there, there's four. Uh, there's four reasons why we, we sketch. One is to understand. One is to explore. You solve with sketching. And probably the most important one then is you communicate. So all four of those are extremely important um, to do with design sketching. The other thing that we, we try and get is uh, speed and accuracy. OK, so these are all the signs of a really good designer, especially if you, if you can get this speed and accuracy going. Now today what we're going to be looking at is this accuracy. And understanding. The rest will follow on from it. OK, so what I'm going to do first with you just as quick reminder. From last week and again, don't be afraid to sketch along with me. Um, you've got your your X plane, your Y plane and your Z plane. Now, the reason I'm showing you this today is that. This is the point of your sketching education where you can go down one of two routes. That is one where you're actually sketching in a meaningful way or two that you end up drawing pictures and I'll explain what I mean by that. A lot of people because we start perspective doing doing the cubes and you, you end up doing a cube in, in two or three point perspective. Mean that this is the start point for every sketch to do. So if they're doing a wheel. They'll use your the, the cube to do it. Now that's 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 doable. OK, but the problem with it is that. It can get confusing and it's the ultimate way of going wrong with regards ellipses as well. What we're going to be doing today is getting away from this thing of. Subtractive. Sketching and what I mean by that is subtract a subtractive sketching is where you start off with a big cube and go my shape is in there somewhere and I start hacking off corners and I start kind of going oh there's a big curve here and, and so on or there might be a dome there and all of a sudden you're trying to make up this this shape in it and it's difficult to do what we're looking to do is an additive form of sketching and that's where you start with maybe a line or uh, a face and what they're known as are planes and center lines and that's really really important because that's what we're going to be covering today are planes and center lines now just as a measure of what how they're done uh, um, how they're written down a center line is always written as a dot okay and a plane is usually a dashed line just to kind of differentiate it fr from your drawing. Now, let's see where we go from there. OK. This ties into your model making uh, work uh, class and, and stuff that you're going to be doing tomorrow. So when we draw in three point perspective, we need to understand a shape. So we're going to start off with a basic mouse and we're going to look at orthographic views. So for example, I'm going to do a center line. I'm going to do an end and I'm going to do another end here. Now, if you're drawing this, this I'm drawing a little bit bigger than probably what I should be. 
Okay, so that's going to be there. They're going to be equidistant. So I'm drawing from the center line. And I'm just going to turn my page here just for a second. Okay, so what we're, we're coming up with now is our computer mouse. Again, equidistant. Now, let's say that's the base of uh, our computer mouse that we're looking straight down on it. And I'm not going to get into drawing buttons and stuff here today. This is just about the basic form generation. Now, with any uh, orthographic view, you need the two other or three or five other views to go with this, depending on your product of whether it's symmetrical or, or asymmetrical. So from this, I'm going to draw uh, a line across and I can project all these measurements up. OK, so this is a kind of a little bit of technical drawing going on here. Now, I've just all I'm doing is bringing up my key lines. Now, what's really, really important with this is you've already started drawing with a center line here. Now you have a baseline, but this is a key line here on this plane. So again, what height does it come to? Where does it go to? So I'm going to just draw another line across here and I'll give you an idea. Why in a second? So that goes up. OK, so standard shape of a computer mouse, but this time I'm just going to flick that in. OK. So in the case of a computer mouse, they'll very rarely sit with a flat edge on the bottom. They usually come in. That's just it's a little designer trick that we can talk about another time. We're just lightening how uh, the, the shape of, of, of that you're dealing with. Now, from that, we need one more image. How do we get that? Those of you that have done your, your technical drawing before, I'm going to just draw another construction line in here. And I'm going to bring my measurements across. Again, starting with your center point and bringing that up at roughly 45 degrees. Your top line and your bottom line. And you're going to bring those up at roughly 45 degrees as well. Okay, so now what you have is the width of your product. Now we can bring that across. We have a center point. So we know that's the highest point of our shape. So now what we can do is bring this one across. So if we're looking straight in at it, comes into here. Now what we're going to do here is draw the back of it. So it's it's uh, uh, from this point down to here. And similarly. And then they're going to step in at the bottom. So that's our computer mouse. Now I've just done this in um, uh, a one point or a first angle projection, but we'll, we'll, we'll come to first and third angle projection later on, but just for the sake of today, um, we're just going to do this uh, to help us understand it. Now, when we look at this shape, right, that one's a little bit out there. When we begin to look at this shape, there are key lines that are really, really important to us. That are these ones. There's this one. There's this one that relates back down. There's our center line going across here. There's this one going across here. There's also this one. So there's lots of different lines that are going to help us draw this shape. Now, different ways that you can do this. One is back up to this method where you draw a box. And you can try and put it in your perspective and draw the back lines. Okay, and then 
try and draw your mouse inside that space. Now, I'm going to say this straight, straight off the bat, that's extremely tough. And the chances of you getting your perspective wrong are very high with this. So th th there's other ways of doing it. And um, what I'm going to get you to do today is uh, isometric drawings. So it's slightly different. It's not a perspective drawing in that it, it's not. There's no vanishing points. Um, what we use is a 60 30 angle split and the measurements all remain parallel and afterwards. So if you draw in. A point down. Sorry, that could be straighter. And we're going to go with a 60 30 where we're actually looking in at uh, the face of, of the product more so. OK, so if you imagine a 60 degrees and again, I'm only guesstimating here again. And. A 30 degrees. OK, so that should end up with 90 degrees in the center. So this is our starting point for this particular shape. Now, the beauty is that you have all your measurements. You know how if this line here is the equivalent of this line here. So I'll just draw that in as a center line. Now, all I've done is added in a plane. So that's this face. The length of it is going to be the equivalent. So again, we can guesstimate that what that's going to be. But more importantly, now what we're doing. Is we're drawing this face. And this line here is probably our most important one. Because that's. One point here, one point here. And about halfway back or beyond halfway back at that point. So now I know that my mouse is going to. Go from there to there into here, into here and back up around. So let's draw that out. So draw face up. Up here. Back down. Angled in. And angled in. So what we've done is we've drawn that face or that plane in at a, an isometric view. Now the beauty of this is now we can use all these other faces. So what I'm going to do is draw in um, the bottom plane, but I'm not going to draw this face. This is the this is the widest point. And the widest point is here and here. It's not on the bottom. So what we need to do is draw in that line. This this is now the plane we're drawing on. OK, and the width of that. Again. I'm a firm believer in guesstimations, so. Same distance out the back. OK. So now what you've got done is, is, is like you've taken that bottom surface and just raised it up a little bit. And what that does, it allows us to draw on this plane. So again, it is the Z plane, but you've just moved it up a little bit. Again, what am I going to do now? This line here, where that hits there, is extremely important. That's our widest point on our product here and here. So that means from there to there, I can draw that in. And it, where does it go to? It comes down to about here. So sorry, just that's that line. So from down to about there, down to about there. And we just draw them back. Okay, so what we have here now is one plane, two planes, and now we're able to do the third one. So how do we do that? We've now got this plane in. Just draw that across and we're going to draw this face. So we know that's the widest point. That's the widest point and we already have that point. So the more you get into these, the less you actually have to to work out. So.
Now, what you should be seeing happening now is a skeletal form starting to build up on it. Again, if you wanted, bring this up, we know that rises. And these pop back in, so we see it very little there. We see it pop back in here and we'll just draw that in here. So it's just the little shadow gap starting to disappear underneath it. Now, what's lovely about these type of things is that you can now imagine just draping a cloth over this. I'm just going to put a little line going up here. But because it's not a straight edge, we're not going to highlight it too much. OK, now what you've got is your. Uh, complex shape. Now, what will happen over time? Is that you'll start drawing these with a little bit more confidence where you're actually able to do um, a very complex shape. Very quickly, almost silhouetted. And add in your center lines. And your different planes. Now there is a danger when you start getting into this uh, and I've seen this done a lot where you, you can get a, a complex shape or not, not even a complex shape, but something quite, let's say. Amorphic um, and people just start adding these layers and layers to try and give an idea of what shape it is. And all of a sudden you're looking at this kind of wireframe approach. Um, that's fine, but what, what you're doing is you're stealing away from the power of the drawing. So if I was doing that shape again, so I'll just draw it, re redraw it out here. I would just add in that plane or that so that your um, your Y plane. Your X plane, put it in where it's relevant. So if, if it changes. What's happening, then you can add it in. So let's say it gets shallower here. You can add it in and for this time. Do you need? The um, uh, the Z plane, probably not. You probably get away with just putting highlight here and maybe even just doing a, a drop shadow on it just to give an idea um, that the product is, is sitting flat on the ground okay so that gives us an idea of um drawing with planes now you can twist this and move this around what's even better about this is now based on your two-point perspective that you've done um you can actually add this um, this technique or this approach to your two point perspective. The principles are still the same. Just as long as you get your foreshortening across these um, vanishing lines, then it, it's equally as easy to do. The other thing I also want to have a chat to you about in relation to this are ellipses. So and ellipses and center lines all start coming together. Um, so. What I'm going to show you first with with this is as part of your equipment, you would have been asked to buy an elliptical template. OK, now. This one is uh, an isometric uh, template, um, so it's very easy for me to, to add in. Once I get my my line in here, I can find uh, you sorry, my minor axis. Once my minor axis is in there, I can throw in um, that shape so that I know uh, it's perfect. Um, so very quickly. And try that in, you, you know that your, your ellipse is is somewhat right. Um, again, it's all down to center lines and in this case, minor axes. Um, center lines are really, really important when it comes to drawing um, circles. So I'm just going to uh, get another sheet here.
Let me just take that bottom one out so we're not tracing. Um, so again, very quickly, the dichotomy of an ellipse, and you you will have done this with, with PJ. Now, in a, an ellipse, you have a major and a minor axis. Okay. Now, depending on what book you read. Some people will say concentrate on the major axis and, and get the, the width of it right. A lot of other people just say all you need is your. Um, uh, because then you can get the angle of your uh, projection. Now, what's really useful tip when you're drawing uh, ellipses is line up the minor axis with your main drawing direction. OK, so again, just very lightly. OK, so that you get your elliptical views. Now, the principle of this is if I fold this along this back over, they should match. If they don't match, it's not an ellipse. So it's good practice just to get into the habit of that. Now, same principle happens when you're working with spheres. Now, in essence, if I draw a circle, that's a sphere. The principle is, is where's the X plane, where's the Y plane, and where's the Z plane? So in this case, what I'm going to do is there's just draw a line across there. Uh, magical view of it. And again. So what you should be seeing now is the X plane, or sorry, the Y plane and the Z plane. OK, so where is the um, the the Y X plane? It's this one here. Imagine you draw another center line down through there. That becomes your X plane. So all of a sudden, You've now the three planes. So if you're doing, so let's say, the top of a bottle. Um, so what have we got? We've got the ellipse that's going across the middle. We have then the center line coming through it. And imagine tangent down from that. You're beginning to form. The bottle. Now again, center line coming up through. Again, center line. So what what's beginning to form here is a better understanding of how to form ellipses based on the center line rather than Okay, and just make sure you're not flat spotting them. Okay, again, if you wanted to do it that it had a more of a rounded bottom. Uh, another center line going across, so that minor axis, or that's a major axis. Okay, so you end up. Uh, with, with the bottle in 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 a complex shape. Now, there's a couple of other ways that we can we can do this with center lines. Again, let's go back to um, computer mice. And I'm only doing computer mice because it links very much into your uh, workshop practice. But the principle of um, a center line and a center plane. Again, just going to draw in our line and our face. Um, I'm not sure if you know this one, but uh, there's a, a Microsoft mouse that's kind of shaped like this. Uh, it's, it's more central. OK, um, now I could end up drawing planes and play and more planes and more, but let's think what's the, the best way of drawing this where you're not getting 
confused with the amount of lines you're drawing. Again, look at our angles. And again, if you're doing if you're doing uh, um, vanishing points, uh, you know where these are all going. All I'm draw doing is drawing equidistant lines on this. Okay, they're all parallel. Now, the principle I'm going to do one at the bottom as well here. The principle of this is that I can now get the width of it, that, and that should be identical. At the back, it's much narrower. But now, look, we can start following those lines. That's probably a little bit too much in. Where I can now follow those lines right to my back. And do similar distance. So if I measure out, so that's that one. Equidistant out, equidistant out. Again, start bringing it in here, in here, down to the back one, and into the back one there. Again, principle. Now look at this complex form that we're beginning to to generate. Again, we'll go bring this back. And that's a straight line. We need to know it's going back in. I'm going to follow that. It's a really thin face on it. And we can do that thinner again, but just for the purpose of this. Okay, and again, just bring in this mouse. So just if you know if you know the mouse. Um, and again, that's your mouse. Again, you can start using some of the tricks you've learned in earlier classes about making this jump slightly off the page. Um, okay. <clears throat> so that's uh, drawing uh, complex forms. Um, I suppose from from your point of view now, it's about getting this to a point where you feel confident in generating these forms using planes and using center lines. Um, try avoid this thing that we talked about earlier about drawing inside a box, um, because what you will end up doing is not understanding the form. You'll be doing your best to make whatever shape it is you're doing fit inside this box um, so that it's, it's almost like squashing it in. Uh, to a space. If you do that, it is rare that you'll actually begin to understand the makeup of the actual shape, knowing that that's a center line. This is another relevant center line. Um, whereas if you go about it this way, I know now by what I know from drawing this out that I can draw this in any view. I can draw from upside down because I know the principle of how it's geometrically going together. So for today, I think there's a couple of things that you can practice. Um, this will be one, and I just throw back in the sheet as well. Um, and this other one will be really, really good to practice. Again, just from a practice point of view, it's useful to start just throwing stuff down on a page. I, I, you heard phrases like burning through pages. Why not? Just get your hand moving, get them sketching, and all of a sudden it doesn't matter if they're going over each other or they're going because later on what we'll learn is how we'll disappear these things in behind. But the principles of what you're trying to achieve uh, are really embedded in just practice, practice, and practice, um, uh, and getting into this notion of of understanding. Once you get understanding and accuracy. That means you'll then develop speed, which will allow you to explore the form. So again, this shape here, something not uh, that would be easy to do. So just again, principle of our line, our edges, and height. So again, you can come up with very complex shapes again use the principle that we've just done
and we can actually round that at the bottom. Do it similar to the other side. And again, now through that center line, Again, a shape that is not an easy one to draw straight off the bat, but because you're doing that geometric build up and really beginning to understand the form factor you're doing helps you get to a point where you're able to draw it very, very quickly. Once you have that done, the details that can be added on to this all link in with, so I don't know if there was a button here. Type. You already have the construction lines. It becomes really easy to do. Um, again, following those on allows you to play around with what's happening on it. I don't know, it could be a logo or something. Just going down the side. See what I mean? Okay, so. That's it, I suppose, from um, a help point of view, um, this book has a couple of nice exercises in it. You'll find this in the library, uh, the design sketching um, from uh, Olufsen. But there's there's a really good uh, example of uh, what I've just gone through this morning with you.